couple facts about tonight's uh, inductee. He was creative director at Oman and Sydney at just the tender age of 22. He was regional creative director of Saatchi Asia at just 26. And he was running Saatchi's head office in London at 29. He became the worldwide chief creative officer of the entire publicist network at just 33 years old. Now, around this time, I had lunch with him in New York, and he told me about his vision to create the world's most innovative, most effective, and most influential creative agency. He spoke with great passion about doing something truly transformative and truly entrepreneurial. Now, I must say, at the time, I thought he was totally nuts, completely off his rocker. But in 2006, he launched his brainchild in New York City, becoming creative chairman. And the work from the very beginning was simply outstanding. Famous campaigns. It was just incredible. Now, that's super impressive. But tonight's inductee is the only person to win Agency of the Year at four different agencies in four different countries. He is the single most awarded creative in the history of the Cannes International Advertising Festival with over 80 Lions, seven Grand Prix, and four, four Titaniums. He was named in Esquire Magazine's annual Best and Brightest issue three times and named Global Australian of the Year by the Advance Committee in 2012. He is the only person to be featured in Creativity Magazine's annual list of global creative influencers every year, every year since the list began 10 years ago. And he is the youngest person ever inducted into the New York Art Directors Club Hall of Fame, joining Walt Disney, Andy Warhol, and David Ogilvy. In his agency's first six years, it has been named Agency of the Year in the US four times by the trade press. And most recently, it won Adweek's Agency of the Year for 2013. And considering it's still February, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good result. Some of his work has been made into case studies at the Harvard Business School, and some of his work also sits in the permanent collection uh, of the Museum of Contemporary Art in New York. And just last week, the agency became the first and only advertising or marketing company to be included in Fast Company Magazine's prestigious world's 50 most innovative companies, along with the likes of Google, Nike, Amazon, Instagram, Tesla, and Coke. When I asked him if there was anything specific he would like me to say up here, he simply replied that it would be really great, really great, if I could say nice things because his mom's here tonight. Well, ma'am, you should be very proud because there is no one more deserving of this honor than your son, this year's inductee into the Ad News Hall of Fame, David Droga. Wow. Wow. Thank you, thank you. I think um, advertising is this crazy, bizarre roller coaster ride, and I feel it's, I've been very, very lucky from the get go. You know, I sort of hit the ground running as this scrappy, feisty 18 year old with enough confidence to believe that I could be spectacular. It is a privilege to be paid to have an imagination. I say that with complete and utter admiration for this industry and it's a tough industry we get our ass kicked all year round but we still get paid to be daydreamers and problem solvers we're lucky you know I come from a very 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 close-knit family I grew up in the I was born in Threadbow I grew up in 
Perisher Valley where there was nothing to do but try and avoid my brothers beating the shit out of me. And, and we, we, out of that actually got uh, an imagination and I've sort of parlayed that into a career and I'm grateful for that. And something like this has taken me around the world and I've worked in uh, some great places with some pretty amazing people. And I've found a life and I've found a, an agency and I've found a belief that is, that is mine. I'm not trying to change the advertising industry. I'm not trying to do anything beyond change my advertising industry. I think we do work in a extraordinary industry and now is the best time for all the uh, fragility and nervousness and uncertainty of what's going on now. It is our time again because the onus is back on us to innovate. The onus is back on us to be relevant again. Technology is not an answer. They're just platforms and we can really do extraordinary things. And it doesn't matter what country you're in, what budgets you have, you know, I look at every opportunity as a chance to do some, try and do something great and try and do something that has impact. And no country or no agency has a monopoly on the best people. And it's just up to us to innovate all the time. So I still hope that, you know, this isn't a, a, a line in the sand. I hope that I can still do stuff that makes me proud and, and, and people like. Um, still trying my hardest, still trying to sort of, like a, a squirrel trying to get a nut. But I'm a very, very proud Australian. I'm obsessive about being Australian. I feel like that's one of the tricks to my success around the world is staying true to being an Aussie, keeping it simple, being straightforward, being sincere about things, and not getting caught up in the hype and the bullshit of this industry. Because we're an industry that, as I said, it has some of the best thinkers in the world. And when we realise how good we are, we can do greater things with that. We are more than just salesmen, we are more than just trying to flog stuff. You know, we can build industry, we can contribute to pop culture, we can contribute to social good. It's our responsibility to do more with what we have. And if we don't do more with that, shame on us, because we're at the intersection of everything. And just to be an advertising person isn't what it was 20 years ago, it's to be much more than that. And good luck with it, thank you very much, I'm proud. Thank you very, very much, Agnes, for recognising me.